So good morning, good evening. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the world. And thank you for attending today. We are going to be talking with Jen McSula from our Counseling and Accessibility Services team. Uh, so hopefully the next hour or so is going to give you a lot of op opportunity to learn about the services and supports that they have for our students. And so Jen, if you'd like to take it away, it's all yours. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Fanshawe. And I'm thrilled to spend the next hour with you. I know that there are going to be chat activities going on um, on the side. So feel free to continue uh, to communicate as needed. My name is Jen, and I'm one of our counselors that's here at Fanshawe College. We have two teams of counselors that are at the college, and I'm going to meet with you today to describe some of the services and supports that you can receive as a student at Fanshawe College. So we have a number of wellness activities that are available to students. And so when I refer to wellness, I think about physical health. So we will have a member from uh, the Wellness Center who will be available to chat and do a presentation about some of the physical activities that are available in the Wellness Center. We also think about mental wellness and our mental health. And in Canada, mental health is something that is talked about quite openly and often amongst the population. And so it is something that will likely come up in all of your courses. You will see posters around campus for opportunities for you to connect. And we do have all of these slides will be available for you. They were shared, so they will be posted. So no need to uh, write down any addresses. But on my Fanshawe, if you go into student resources, you'll find information about groups and workshops that are available. Um, and some of the groups are for learning. Not so much sharing your personal story or your personal details, but more around skills about how do I manage stress? What is anxiety and what are some strategies that I can use proactively to prevent stress from happening? Um, and what can I do if I find myself in stressful situations? So there are some activities. They are free. So if you're a student here at Fanshawe, you're welcome to register for them. When we talk about counseling services, this may be new for some of you. Our personal counselors are professionally trained. So they have a minimum of a master's degree. Some have PhDs. And the counseling process is private. And so I know that I've spoken with some students who will say, mm, there really is no such thing as privacy. In Canada, we have very strict rules about what we're allowed to talk about and what we're not. So students will come to one of our personal counselors and they can meet with them by phone, Zoom, or in person and talk about anything that's causing them concern. So it can be about school, it can be about finances, relationships, roommates, family issues, uh, what it's like to live in a country for the first time, if it's your first time being away from home. All of those concerns are coming into the learning environment with you. And at Fanshawe, we believe in supporting the entire person. So if you're finding yourself having those concerns, you can speak with the counselor. Um, they will not tell you what to do. So some students will arrive and say, this is what's happening, what should I do? Counselors will not tell you what's the best direction because we believe you are the expert on you. You know yourself best. As a counselor, we'll help you to perhaps look at a situation from different perspectives, maybe identify options that maybe you didn't realize were available or could occur, help you to determine maybe the pros and cons, the strengths and weaknesses about various choices, and support you as you make your decisions. When I say private, we are an adult institution, so you should get to decide who hears your information and who doesn't. So a roommate's not going to call up and say, hey, uh, we know someone came in and spoke with Jen. How are they doing or what did they talk about? 
our office will not confirm that you've been here. We will not share what you talked about. We will not confirm if you have an appointment with anyone other than you. But around confidentiality, we want to make sure that everyone stays safe. So that includes you, people in your world, but especially children. So if you have commented about thoughts about hurting yourself, then we need to let someone know to make sure that you stay safe. If you talk about harming someone else, we need to make sure that other people stay safe. And children are especially vulnerable. So if children are involved in a situation where they're at risk of being harmed, or witnessing distressing situations, then we need to make sure that those kids are protected as well. So when we talk about privacy, we can guarantee privacy unless it's a matter of safety. So when students make comments, we do take them seriously um, and we do act in ways that do help to protect you. If you are seeing a counselor, it does not get shared with your program. It does not affect your grades. Immigration in Canada, the government does not know that you're meeting with a counselor that never gets shared, okay? So if you access counseling, it is a support for you and other people are not informed of that. Um, and that includes partners, parents, nobody has a right to your information unless we have your permission, okay? The counseling services are available for free so they are included in part of your tuition. Uh, and so we do encourage you to connect. We also have uh, counseling support that are available through your health plans, which are available on the weekends and in the evenings. And so you can access both if they're helpful. So we do have a phone number that will, if you call, they'll ask you, would you like to speak with an academic counselor or a personal counselor? And then we'll ask for your name and your student number and we'll book you in with a counselor. We have a combination of male and female counselors. Um, and we have office hours typically between 8.30 and 7.30 in the evening. You can also stop by our office. So we're located in F as in Frank 2010 and you can stop in to make an appointment as well. So I've chatted with some of the topics that people may come and speak with a counselor. So it's not just limited to this list, but many students come and talk about the adjustment of coming to college. And so those are both, you know, domestic students, but also international students, that adjustment, different expectations, stress and anxiety, and we all have stress, right? So we often ask students to rate their stress on a scale of one to 10, because only when we're asleep, and even sometimes when we sleep, we're not having restful sleeps. So sometimes we'll have a little bit of stress to a lot of stress, and that can change throughout the day. Depression is something that can occur. So everyone has sad days, right? Maybe you didn't get a mark that you wanted, or, you know, maybe there is a relationship challenge. Maybe you're missing someone who's not here. So sadness is common. Everyone usually experiences sadness at one point in their life. Depression is something that happens when you are feeling sad most of the time or some of your usual activities. So I am a huge sweet eater and I love hanging with my friends. If my comfort foods or foods that I usually enjoy no longer bring me happiness, if spending time with my friends no longer brings me happiness, if I'm irritable or grumpy and find myself being impatient with people, if I'm having changes in my sleep, where maybe I'm sleeping a lot more than usual and I'm tired, or maybe I'm sleeping a lot less where it's hard for me to get to sleep. Maybe I can, maybe I can fall asleep, but maybe I'm waking up during the night or maybe waking up very early in the morning. You may want to come in and speak with one of our counselors because that is above what we would consider typical sadness. And you might need some support to look at options. 
Um, and speaking with a counselor can be helpful. Sometimes medication will be helpful uh, and we'll look to explore options with you. So we do offer groups. And so I chatted a little bit about some of the groups uh, that have happened. And so we have something called mindfulness and mindfulness is something that often needs practice. In our very busy world, we are often thinking, thinking, thinking about lots of different things. And so if I'm trying to write a test or deliver a presentation and I'm thinking about what I need to do tomorrow, what I need to do for my next meeting, what I need to do next week, or if I'm thinking about yesterday, oh, I missed, I forgot to do that, or oh, I'll, I'll have to remember to do that today. Mindfulness encourages you to focus on the right here and right now. And so I know many of you are probably experiencing stress, getting ready for coming and arriving and, and planning for your studies. What I would like you to do is invite you to participate in a moment of mindfulness with me. So for those of you with your cameras off, uh, I welcome you to join me. If you wanna turn your camera off during this, you can. What I want you to do is just place a hand somewhere on your chest. And I want you to take in a deep breath in your nose, hold it for a few seconds and breathe out your mouth. So I'll do it with you. Breathe in and breathe out. We're gonna do this a few more times, but as you are breathing, now I want you to put your hand just above your belly button. Because when we're breathing deeply, we should feel our body expanding. But when those thoughts come in about later today or yesterday, I just want you to invite them to be like, okay, those thoughts are still there, but right now I'm breathing. And that's what I'm focusing on. So any thoughts that come in, let's just kind of push them or park them, put them on a shelf and let's just breathe. So let's do it for three cycles. Breathe in, hold, breathe out. One more time, in and out. And one last time, breathe in. And out. Okay, so that breathing, it doesn't solve problems, but what it allows us to do is focus on things just one at a time. So we can't breathe for tomorrow. We can't breathe for yesterday. And that's why mindfulness focuses on the breath. We can only breathe for right now we can only deal with what's in front of us right now. So sometimes when people get stress, mindfulness will encourage you to just focus on your breath, remind you to focus on one thing at a time. And it sounds simple, but it does need practice. Uh, so we do offer mindfulness groups. There is a group in our wellness workshop series, it's called Be Well, and it's a series of four sessions, and I highly recommend it for students um, because it does talk about being balanced, being focused. Um, it does also focus on action. So how can I communicate in a way that's assertive and clear, right? And it's definitely skill building. Um, and from time to time, we also offer some depression and anxiety groups. And those happen throughout the term. So our next session will be starting soon. And I welcome you to sign up for some of those sessions and just develop some skills that may be new. Um, or maybe you have those skills and maybe are forgetting to use them. So refreshers are often helpful as well. I'm a member of the Accessibility Services team. Uh, and when we talk about accessibility services, we talk about disabilities and accommodations. And so we'll talk a little bit about accommodations, but usually about 10% of the student population is registered with us as a student with a disability. So when I talk about disabilities, I'm talking about conditions that are affecting your learning experience. 
And so these can be examples of an acquired brain injury, like a concussion. And so a concussion, those symptoms, hopefully if you have one, they're not permanent, but they can be lifelong and lasting, but they can also be temporary. Maybe for a couple of weeks, maybe I don't feel well due to my concussion. Our office can help to provide support on a short-term basis or if your disability is permanent. If you have autism or on the autism spectrum, you can register with our office. If you have something called ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, that's a condition that often affects people's ability to focus and concentrate for periods of time. Sometimes it affects organization and our ability to plan for academic activities. Um, if you have chronic illness or have a medical condition, so I often support students who are perhaps involved in cancer treatment. Um, if they have had a surgery and they're what we call post-op or post-operative and they need some support while they're healing and recovering from their surgery. If they have a back injury and maybe their back uh, is uncomfortable, it sometimes affects their ability to sit in a classroom two to, for two to three hours a day. We can work with you to create some flexibility around that. If you are deaf, deafened or hard of hearing, if you have a learning disability or blind, low vision, if you have a mental health condition, and some students um, are excited to learn that a mental health condition can actually qualify for support. So things like anxiety and depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, and some of these terms may be new for you, um, but certainly if you have a mental health condition, you're welcome to connect with our office to receive support. And so when we talk about accommodations for disability related reasons, we're not talking about housing accommodations. What accommodations are, um, are flexibility related to either how you learn the material or how you show what you're able to do, your knowledge and abilities. So around flexibility, we can look at things like extra time for tests and exams. So if it's a one hour exam, and let's, I gave the example of the person with the back injury, maybe sitting for long periods of time is uncomfortable for you. And we know when you're in pain, sometimes it can be hard to maintain your concentration. So maybe we have you do the same test, but we give you extra time. So if you need to stand up and maybe stretch your back, maybe do some mindfulness, deep breathing, if you have a mental health condition, if you struggle with attention and concentration, you may find yourself distracted. You may use that extra time to go, oh, I need to refocus and focus on my test or exam. Same test, same test answers are gonna be marked correct or not. So we're not changing the course, but we may change how you do the test and how much time you have to complete the test. Um, we also offer note-taking support. So for some students who don't feel well, uh, students who struggle with attention, the idea of watching a presentation like this, watching the slides and trying to take notes at the same time, maybe you can do one thing really well. Maybe you can pay attention to the presentation, but you don't have that ability to take notes at the same time. Our office can match you with options where maybe you can get those notes provided for you so that you can focus on interacting with the instructor, paying attention to the lecture and watching the slides, and you're not having to sacrifice. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna take notes or am I gonna participate? Knowing that your notes are happening for you may allow you to focus more in class. Um, we also offer, there's adaptive software, and so any student in the college can access it. Some people like to listen to their notes or to their textbooks. Listening to textbooks could be an option, and we can show you how to use that software. If you are accessing accommodations, it does not appear on your transcript. 
So if you get an A in a math course and you get extra time to complete the test, it will not say an A in math with help. Not at all. It does not appear on your transcript if you have accommodations. The government is not informed if you have accommodations. Um, so it does not appear on there when you get your diploma and, and have it posted and framed on your wall or wherever you want to post it. Um, it will not state whether you have access to accommodations. And the reason why that happens is we're not changing the course. Right? You have to meet all of the same learning requirements. We're just creating some flexibility in how you do that. Okay. So if you have a disability, I welcome you to register with us. If you think you have a disability, I welcome you to register with us. If you're not sure if your condition is a disability, I welcome you to register with us. And so if you go on and complete the early ID, and again, these slides are available, the early ID is the first step to connecting with our accessibility counselors. Um, the early ID asks you to identify your name, your student number, how we can reach you, so your phone and your email address, and what program you're in. From there, you'll be matched with a counselor where we'll meet with you to talk about your learning needs. If you have documentation, so if you have a letter from your doctor, if you have an assessment where you've been diagnosed with a disability, I encourage you to bring that with you. That is helpful information for us to have to understand your learning needs. If you have no documentation, that's okay. You can register with us and we'll work with you to get that documentation. Then you'll meet with your counselor and we'll create a support plan. That support plan will identify the supports you may need. So it may say this student may need accommodations, but it will not list on there why you need them. So if you have a back injury, if you've been diagnosed with anxiety or depression, that does not get shared with your faculty. The only thing they're informed is what accommodations you may need as you're in the course, but never why you need them. If you want to share that with your instructors, you're welcome to. Just know that we will not be sharing that unless we have your permission. Okay. And then the last slide is the general office number. So that will allow you, if you call that, that will allow you to book with personal counselors, yeah. with uh, an accessibility counselor. Um, and then also if you have accessibility related questions, you can send us an email and we'll do our best to get back to you. So right now I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen so that if any of you have questions, I do see some of you have your hands up. I'm just gonna do a quick peek at the chat just to see the questions come up. Uh, and I know some of those questions may or may not be disability related. So I see lots of networking happening. Um, so excellent. Uh, so yeah, lots of questions around invoicing. And I welcome you if you would like to unmute if you have a question that's related to accessibility or personal counseling. Um, I welcome you to unmute and perhaps ask your question. Hi, Jen. Yes. So I monitored the chat and there wasn't any specific questions. And those that were, I asked them to ask you. Perfect. Um, but if we could just use the raise your hand feature rather than everyone unmuting at once, that would be great. So I believe it's, um, is it Habe? I'm not sure. I saw your hand up. I wasn't sure if that was still up or if you have a new question. Abhe? Hello, ma'am. How much days are classes in a business group? Pardon me? How much days are classes in a business group? How many days are classes in the business program? Yes. So our programs typically run Monday through Friday. So your classes may not be every day, but your classes are usually scheduled Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
ओके मैम थैंक यू यूर वेलकम Diego, I, I see like that to... you have. Yeah, you too. Thanks for being here. Diego, I see you have your hand up. Yes. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Uh, my, I have two questions. The first one is: Are these uh, services uh, be extended to the family too? They Or are just not. for students. Yeah, no. they're just for students at this time. And so the counseling is available for students. If your family member is a student here, they can access them. Um, but I'm not sure. And that's where perhaps we could talk about your medical plan and if there are resources available for students, if they get the coverage for their family. But um, for ours, our accessibility and our counseling is just for students. Okay, thanks. The The second, second question is not necessary, so Thank you okay. very much. Excellent. Okay. Just want to see who else. Sammy, you have your hand up. Hi, good morning, Jennifer. Good morning. Uh, so my question is regarding that you mentioned that there will be counseling sessions provided through Zoom and maybe uh, personally, but will that be provided in the main campus or on the other campuses as well? Like That's a great question, Sammy. And so we have counselors and accessibility counselors at all of our campuses. So if your program will be down at the South Campus, uh, then my colleague Jillian, Jill is down there and Jill is both a personal counselor and an accessibility counselor. So she's able to provide in-person support, but also Zoom and phone support. So we have counselors that go to the Woodstock Campus, the Simcoe Campus, Tilsonburg. We have uh, coverage for all of the campuses. That's a great question. Thank you so much. Thank You're welcome. So Any other questions? Jen, I did have a private question. Someone just asking about the fees for services like note taking and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if it is for disability related reasons, uh, the college has a responsibility of meeting your needs. So if you do have a disability, like the ones that we described, we will work with students to provide that service, but it should not be provided at a cost to you. So our services could be connecting with a peer. So another person who's in your program, who's already taking notes, who would like to share their notes. And some students, again, are concerned about privacy. Our peer note-taking system is private. So if I were in your class, the instructor may email and say, hey, does anyone want to share their notes? Sure. They will pay me $75 for the term to share my notes. So at the end of class, I'll upload my notes to the cloud. I don't know if one student or if 14 students are using my notes. And I never know. So as a note taker, I'll upload my notes to the cloud. You will go on and get my notes and you won't even know who your note taker is. So it is a private process. Some students also like recording their lectures. So sometimes you can use your cell phone to record the lecture. Some students like that if they like making their own notes. So you can record the lecture and then play it afterwards so you can listen to it, stop the recording and update your notes. So there's a few options, but yeah, connect with your counselor and we'll support, we'll explore that for you. Any other questions? Yeah, Pedro. Good morning, Jennifer. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Pedro? I'm fine. Uh, I have a question about uh, physical activities on campus. Mm -hmm. Is there any gym available for inter international students? Yeah, so Fanshawe has an entire complex for students if you want to get active. Uh, and we highly support that as a way of staying healthy and sort of managing some stress. So I do believe the fitness center uh, will be providing a session, but we do have a fitness facility where you can go and participate in classes like yoga. Um, we also have equipment. We have um, a golf simulator. So if you would like to golf, absolutely. There are uh, lots of activities. We also have intramural 
which is uh, casual sporting events that are available. So if you want to join a team like basketball and complete, uh, compete for fun with other students, for sure, those are available. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Christian. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Um, I have two questions. I would like to ask, uh, what is the difference or what is the main difference between a counselor and a therapist? And the second question is, what methods do counselors use to help the students in this case? Thank you. Excellent. No, those are great questions, Kristen. Um, and they're very similar, right? And so here in Canada, um, the term counselor or psychotherapist, those are regulated health acts. So not just anybody can call themselves a counselor or a psychotherapist. Um, in some cu cultures, therapy or personal therapy, a personal therapist, you're probably talking about the same thing. So if you're participating in personal therapy or talk therapy, that is similar to what I'm talking about. So the modalities often differ. Um, so often it's cognitive behavioral. We look at the connection between the thoughts and how our thoughts affect our behaviors or our reactions. Um, a lot of people will work with distress tolerance. Um, and so that is often a modality that people will learn, recognizing stress, building in time. So an ability for us to manage that. So those are often the two modalities uh, that are used. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. These are great questions. And Abhay, did you still have another question? Ma'am, what French college provide gym or game facilities? Did Sorry, was it, are you asking if this session is being recorded? French college provide gym or game facilities? I think the question is related to gym or workout type uh, facilities. Yes. which is all available at our uh, wellness center. So we do have an actual full gym on site. And then we have uh, gymnasiums as well. So where you can go and do like open rec times and stuff. And you'll have the opportunity to learn like specific things about that during the Here For You series. Um, so they will be there. They'll be at your orientations. Like there is such a large presence. Um, and the wellness center does have a lot of programming and stuff that is great for students to use. Because as Jen was saying, there is a huge link between being physically active and overall wellness. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Dan B. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Okay, so I want to ask, what is the frequency for having counseling? Like we can have counseling during uh, once a week or once a month, anything like that? Yeah, it sort of depends on uh, our counselors. So right now we do have 12 counselors that are part of our team. There are busier times throughout the year. So um around midterms and final exams, we find stress does increase. Um, so weekly sessions are difficult just because of the number of students that we have. Um, and so many students find that maybe once every three weeks can be helpful, uh, but weekly is sometimes difficult to manage. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. And that's where some students too will supplement with groups. So they may have a personal counselor and then they'll also attend groups to continue to build strategies as well. And often our counselors will um, assign material or give resources for you to work on in between sessions um, so that your growth is continuing while you're waiting for your next appointment as well. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We also offer something called same day appointments. So every day we do have select a uh, number of appointments that are available. So if there's an urgent situation, 
um, or something that has happened and you need sort of more urgent support, you can connect with us to see if there is a same day appointment available. And we also have phone lines that are available here in London that are available 24-7, 365 days a year. Um, so in addition to your Fanshawe counselor, there are counselors. There are counselors that are available as well. Oh, I'm going to try and read it. I'm hearing myself. There we go. Okay. Um, so there is support that's available 24 seven. So you can access those resources as well if ever needed. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome. And Jen, there was a question in the chat and it was just regarding like, can students use counseling just one time or is there also the opportunity to use it like throughout their whole program? Absolutely, because we know and, and sometimes we'll see students come and they'll meet with us and maybe get the skills and tools that they need to address their concern. And then they go and participate and then maybe they come back if another situation or a different situation appears. Absolutely. You can access these resources while you're a student here. Absolutely. Yeah, and it can be a one time. Maybe it's just, maybe I just need to look at things from a different perspective and that meets my needs. For sure, you can come in just once. Other students um, will continue and maybe need some support if the situation's more complex. Uh, I see a question coming up. Are students able to access the support before they're a student? No. So you do need to be an active student participating in the program in order to access the services. Uh, so that's something that we encourage students to do is to register as soon as you can with us, uh, but personal counseling will be available once your program officially starts. I'm not sure about more care, whether you're able to access those services before your program starts. So I'm going to defer that question to the experts. Yeah, so more care, the early coverage is only emergency coverage. So if you arrived and something happened, you have emergency medical coverage, but that would be it. Counseling, if you were using outside of Fanshawe's services, is considered a, a paramedical expense. So you do have some coverage for that, but not during that month when you first arrive, unless, of course, it was some sort of urgent mental health need that would fall under the emergency care. But ideally, you're not going to arrive in the middle of April and have some sort of mental health emergency. We really hope you don't. But if you did, you could reach out to us and we would try to find you the support. Did that fully answer that question? I just want to make sure. <laughs> I'm going to think it did since there was no follow-up to that. Yeah, I didn't see anything pop. And is there any other questions for Jennifer today while she's here with us? Niece? Or perhaps you go by Stephanie. Nice or Nise, can I ask you to unmute if you have a question? Or perhaps pop it in the chat if you're having any technical difficulties, which we know happens. Okay, I'll keep you up there. So if you are able to unmute, feel free to uh, to let us know or pop it in the chat. Abhay? Ma'am, when I arrive in Canada, can I buy some medicines from India? Can you buy medicine? 
Yes. Can I buy medicine from India when I arrive in Canada? Yep. So there are medications that are available. So we do have pharmacies. So there are some that you can get without a prescription. Uh, so those are available, what we call over the counter. So you can purchase them, some pain medications. Uh, if you have a cold or a flu, those are often available. Other prescriptions are only available by doctor recommendation. And for those, you would need to have a prescription or a script in order to access those. And you would get those from a doctor. Okay, uh, and I need a bill when I buy medicine in India. Sorry, can you repeat that one? When I arrive in Canada, uh, I can buy some medicines regarding pain, painkiller or some other medicines. Yes. Yeah, so Fanshawe here, our campus has a pharmacy on campus, so you can purchase here. Uh, there are many that are in the surrounding area, so yes, absolutely. Okay, ma'am, thank you. You're welcome. And Abhay, you just want to make sure that um, the stuff you're looking to access here isn't prescription only. So sometimes, because we're in different countries, the um, accessibility of those um painkillers and stuff might be different too so here we do have as as jen said over the counter options and those anybody can access by just walking into the pharmacy but some more um like <laughs> higher strength level painkillers and stuff would likely require seeing a doctor and a prescription so just keep in mind that there may be uh, differences in countries okay ma'am thank you Christian? Thank you, ma'am. Yes, I'm really sorry. I have a question for Miss Christelle, but it's not concerning wellness activities. May I ask it? Sure. Yes, Miss Christelle, uh, I would like to ask you a question. It's uh, uh, about the, the shuttle service. I have received the confirmation email uh, from you, from the ISF. Uh, but in the confirmation email, it says that your form and arrival is approved. However, I don't know if I uh, if I should go in, uh, into the Robert Q Shuttle Bus website and book, or 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 should I do it, or sh or I I shouldn't do it. I don't know. So, Christian, are you arriving with family? Uh, I'm arriving with my wife. Okay, so double check your confirmation because it may have listed you with some options to travel with family. Did you select traveling with family on your eyes? Yes, yes, yes. I so did. Then, so your confirmation would have a list of travel uh, provider options and then you book with one of them for yourself and your wife and then you submit the receipt back to Fanshawe Cares. It, it says transportation options, and it tells me uh, three options, Robert Q, dri driver seat London, and person airport. Yeah. I guess it's Robert Q. So so I should go inside their website, right? Yes, yes. So if you go to Robert Q and you book it yourself, um, and then you would so, uh, submit the receipt for a transportation credit refund after courses start. So, uh, okay, so I pay for mine and my wife, and then I submit the receipt to you guys. Yes. Yep. After the term starts. Yes. Yeah. Only because you're traveling with family and we can't book for family. So we give you the options and then you book it. And then we have a hundred dollar transportation credit reimbursement process. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I understood. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm just going to quickly ask that if the other people who have their hands raised, if the question is for me, I'm going to give a few minutes at the end, but I just want to uh, get to any questions for Jen while she's still able to be here with us. So was there any last minute questions for Jen or anything else you weren't sure? And if you're not comfortable asking here, you can also, also send an email. So do not worry about that. That is definitely an option as well. Perfect. So we will let Jen go. Thank you so much. It's so great that you've given a chance to ask these questions. And I think this is often a topic that people find hard to discuss and bring up, but you really do make it feel like a really great safe space. So thank you. Awesome. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for your time, everyone, today. And welcome to Fanshawe. Happy travels. 
Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for joining today. Thank you for all of the great questions. I think it makes such a better experience when there's lots of engagement. Um, hopefully, we've been able to answer a lot of your questions and give you some more confidence with knowing that there is so many supports here for you. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all back tomorrow for another great session. So thank you all and have a good day or evening, depending on where you are in the world. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, man. Thank you. Have a great